sometimes what the, what the parents have to now do because this parents now this this parent he or she the last thing they want is to drive a wedge between they and the child because they want at all times to keep a good relationship, a good rapport with, with that child. They want that right. They want that child to come and tell them every and any and everything. Mm-hmm. So they what want they, will, they want they want the child to be their friend. That's right, and parents. But and that's the thing is, is that parents and children are not friends. Well, you see, I, I, I they're I not just, friends. They are not friends, but I, I disagree with that certain level. Eh? I disagree with that certain level. They should be, but they should they, be, they, but they're not. They are because times, they, they are not, but there are times. There are times. Just give me one second. There, there are times when a parent would have to come a friend of the child. There I are agree. times when the parents would have to be parents, and mm-hmm. they do that by having a good bond with each other good relationship because I think you want your child to come to you first. In any it's situation you don't want your child to go outside. Mm-hmm. But come back to the situation of, the, of a 14 year old girl dating an 18 year old man. I think the parents now will have to step up to that that and come and tell up. This is how I want you to conduct yourself. This is how I want you to behave. You start having sex, unprotected sex, these are the consequences. One, you could get pregnant. If you get pregnant, it could set you back two or three years in your education. You okay. need to consider these things. You know, because you c- cannot go into the classroom pregnant and all of these things. You want, we want to stir these values. And then you would tell that 14 year old child, this is what I want you to look out for in his behavior. You know, see how angry, how easily he gets angry. Look at how he treats his parents. Yes. You know, right. Um, call me and this time you go, let me know where he is. I'll come and pick you up. Please look out for these things because you may they realize you can tell my child don't date him and then the last thing you want the child is to, to run away, steal a chance, lie, lie to you and, and go on. So therefore you will have to find a different mechanism to deal with it, a different, try to deal with it from a different point of view. Yeah, mm-hmm. George, George. Yes. Yes. While, while you're on that point about the parents feeling the worst, they're very um, pessimistic about the outcome, you know, and I, I must agree with you, parents may not even tell the children, but it's a secret fear, what if she gets pregnant, That's you right. know, and, and the thing is, some parents may not even look that it is going to hamper your education, but... I now have to take care of that child and feed it because you don't have a job. You can't do it. And, and, and they may not say these things, but, but they have those fears, and it does not lend to a good rapport between the children and the, 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 the children themselves. But, you know, mm-hmm. I, I heard a little quip once. It is a little funny, but it brings out the point about parents, you know, thinking the worst. Here was this girl, she was about 15, and she came home and told the mother that she had this little, boy, this little boyfriend. He must have been about 16, 17, somewhere around there. So the mother sat her down and gave her some very good motherly instructions about that sort of situation. And she said things to her like, if he ever pushes his hand in your bosom, to caress your breast, say, don't. And if he goes and finds himself in your pelvis and he tries to touch your genitals, say, stop. The girl had the instruction and that was it. But the mother was away from home once and when she came back, the guy was there with the girl. And Hmm. she came in unexpectedly and found him in a very uncompromising position. They had gone the whole mile. And the mother was so hurt, she waited until the boy left and said, did I not tell you to look out for these things? If he touched your breast and she went over it, then you say, don't. And if he touches your genitals, you say, stop. 
Did you remember that? She said, yes, mommy. And then why did it get this far? She said, mommy did both at the same time. So she mm. said, don't stop. <laughs> wow. You see? Oh. A bit funny, but it, it brings out. Uh, parents are always looking at that. I mean, they don't look that. Here's a relationship that could really flourish into a family. Mm -hmm. and, um, and deal with that, like taking the children and not talking to them, but talking with them about it. But there's always this fear they're going to have sex and that, you know, and that's all that. And if you're doing that, you are going to emit a vibe that the child is going to pick up and will eventually come to the conclusion that you don't trust them. And True. that cannot lend to a good relationship. How much, how much likely that a 14 year old girl Dating a man who is eighteen years old, or, 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 or even or, or even as sixteen, how much likely that that young man is going to be your husband for the rest of her life in Western society? Well, um, I mean, it is not impossible. You sure. may want to tell me it's highly improbable, but I mean, it is also possible. Sure. You see, and it all depends on the background from which the children have come. Mm -hmm. You see, if the girl does not see a loving relationship between her mom and dad, children, children live what they learn. So, so right. she's not prepared for a partner. She is only satisfying a biological urge. Mm -hmm. But if it is a family situation where people can court honorably, it, it is really healthy. But, young, but, but, but tell yeah, me something. Yeah. I, I, I don't think young people did to, to actually learn how to, to, about friendship and companion and that. In most cases, especially young men, the, the girls may be a more inclined for friendship and part, but the young men, they more will want to date for our, um, what should I call it? Uh, but the, 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 that, that ego that they want to have this girl or that girl and they have sex with this one or that one. I think it's more of a physical than anything as young men who, I mean, who want to be getting involved in dating. Right? Uh, yeah. Um, but I tell you something, George, you gotta blame that on testosterone. <laughs> But I mean, it, it, it only goes to show that the family, the family, your children should be a, 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 a resemblance of you. And therefore, if we fail as parents to, to befriend our children and, and talk with them rather than talk at or to them, these things we're saying, but the, the fault comes there, there where we fail to see them as people too. We see them as objects which ought to be silenced. Too long parents do that. You know? And that is why I said a little earlier that parents and children are not friends. Little Susie gets herself in trouble. She goes and tells her friend Sylvia, but she doesn't tell her mom. And she, she doesn't want her mom to know, but she will go and tell Sylvia. Sylvia, now, who is ill in farm, will give her some sort of mal advice, and there they go tumbling down the hill to destruction. Well, but it should be a situation where you can come and say to mommy, so and so and so and so and so. But children see parents with the authoritarian personality, and you can't tell parents certain things. Well, but you, you, you must, not, must not just tell children you love them, but you've got to make them feel their love. How well, many of us do that? Well, this is where parenting skills comes in. Because if you bring up a child, and that child, don't, you don't have a relationship with that child, where that child was free to come and tell you almost anything 
and consider you more important in, in, in their life, his or her life, than anyone else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Something went wrong somewhere. You know, my, I had a relative who told me once that she feels so good. She felt so good when her son get his first pubic hair, when he get his first, this set of hair came up and he came to her his hair and, and showing her, look, mommy, I'm getting here. And she said, she feel great about that. She said, normally he was shy away. Boys intend to shy away and go and talk. But she said she felt really good because she believed that now, hey, this is something that teenager, you know, in the 13 or 14, whatever, was sort of like, don't want, the kind of thing that they would not want to discuss with their parents. And she said she feel really good about that. But you see, the second question, uh, go ahead. Because some, pa- some Yeah, I would just want to say that some parents would feel embarrassed if the child came and showed them that. Some parents would feel embarrassed. That's a rare case. But fortunately, where, where, she where, did where, not. Where, 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 a, where a guy go and show his mom that. You know the amount of boys who had nocturnal emissions and hide their pajamas that the mother couldn't see it? Well, I was one of those, without a doubt. But think, think about it, dear. Now, How do you think I know that it happened? Right. Compromise. How should, how far a parent should go? Why a, a, a parent will want to at least stay close to the children, the kids and um, the, the child, he or she, and they will not want to eliminate that child in terms of teenage dating and all of that because you want any problem to develop. You want to know about it first. You want to know what's going on in the, chi- in the, in the child's life, his or her life. So, therefore, it's very important to keep a good rapport with that child in, 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 in that child's life. As I said before, as I said before, teenage, teenage relationship could have abuse in it and could have con- a lot of consequences in it because teens get, teens are still experimenting and they get into all right. kinds of trouble, such as even taking drugs, stealing and on all these sort of things. So you want to keep close. So therefore, sometimes you will have to allow certain things because just because you don't want your child to grow away from you, you don't want your child to hide anything, anything from you. But the question is now, how far should you compromise? Your, your 14-year-old daughter or your 14-year-old son bring mm-hmm. home his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Would you allow them to go into the bedroom and, keep, and the door is closed? No, Absolutely. I certainly Not wouldn't. My bedroom is out of bounds. Not your bedroom. bedroom. Yeah. No, no, their bedroom. They have their own room in the house. No, Absolutely but the bedroom, is, the, bed, the bedroom is mine. That's right. The house, is, the house is mine. My children are under supervision. I don't talk about somebody 18, 19 years old, you know. I'm talking about children growing up, so 12, 13, 14 around there. Why would some stranger of yours come to my home and y'all mm-hmm. going into a bedroom and close in the door. You, that, right. he, doesn't, he doesn't live here. He's a visitor. Mm-hmm. You get what I mean? And, and this sure. would not be, I say so. My child, I am sure, by the time they make 14, they would know that that bedroom is out of bounds. And I, mm-hmm. they won't have to come and ask me, Daddy, I can take him in there. No, they won't, they won't do that. Because I, mm-hmm. and I, it's not because that daddy is tyrannic and he, he's like Nero and he's cruel, but they know that that's not nice. Mm-hmm. I won't do that. And, and, mm-hmm. and if the guy is insisting on doing that, I'm sure that they would say to him, well, who would you expect to do that? You should not do that. You don't come to my home and you going to enter my bedroom with, with a daughter of mine. You're going to be crazy. <laughs> no, would you allow you, your son? Would you, would you, would you allow your no, no, there, there's no discrimination here. He he doesn't do it either. Like what she's saying. somebody, she's somebody's daughter, and I am taking care of her when she's at me. True for her parents. So it is True. not a matter. My son can do whatever he feel like in there. Of course not. That's because right. she is somebody's daughter. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't want it done to mine at anybody's home. I am going to see that it isn't done at mine. Mm-hmm. Simple as that. And, and that is not 
I am angry and I put the rules down and you have to hear. We would have created such a rapport that you would know that's not nice. My daddy wouldn't like that. And I, I wouldn't want to do that. It but then true. again, ch children live what they learn, see? My father was not the sort who flogged me. He would sit and he would talk with you and whatnot. And very often, I, I remember doing something once that really deserved the flogging. And my father sat me down and he said, You know, John, I'm really disappointed. Hurt. I, I couldn't think you would have done that. Believe you me, George. Uh, Larry, I felt worse than if he had cuffed me down. I wish that he had. Because I felt, my God, what have you done to your dad? And he didn't have to hold me and say, go bring that leather, let me, let me beat you. Not at all. I think that too is another thing that we as parents have got to check up on. If we want to have a good rapport with our children, I see no reason why anybody should indulge in corporal punishment. The person is not a mule or a, a donkey or mm. anything. So, well, it's that's the well, that's the thing that you can talk well, to your child. And, right. and, 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 and thanks. See, I don't like the idea of corporal punishment. Well, that's a topic we could take up at, uh, at, at some later stage, but it's good. No, but you I allow... Right, yeah. You where you can get... I, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I quite understand what you're saying, yeah. But the thing about it, you allowed your child to date, you said yes, you give them that leeway. Yeah. But yes, you allow them to date with some restrictions, you put, you put, you put limitation on, on, on how far they can go, in terms but of you, 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 you can't, you can't come into the bed, you can't, I wouldn't allow you, and your boyfriend into the bedroom or your girlfriend into the bedroom. But do I allow you to sit down outside in the car after nine and I'm inside and I'm inside watching TV or sleeping, but you're outside in the car, you went out, you went out on a date, probably you went to the movies or such, but instead of you come home and say, look, I'm mommy, I wish you said you, st you, you stop outside in the car, outside the gate, and for long hours you dare. Is that any different from they both of them coming home and going into the bedroom? No, but you see, if they did that outside where they may kiss while they're at the movies too, mm -hmm. but I don't see it, now I don't uphold it, but sure. they would, I'm sure they wouldn't want to kiss in front of me, even in my right. um, drawing room. Correct. In my front room, they wouldn't want to kiss in front of me, and the mere fact that they wouldn't want them to do that, they know that there's something not right about this. Mm -hmm. That's why they wouldn't kiss in front in front of me. I agree. You see, and I am saying that when your conscience registers, that is where you are held responsible. If your conscience doesn't register, well, then there's nothing wrong about what you're doing. I'm not mm -hmm. talking about what we call you, you stifle your conscience. When you do something and feel comfortable about it, I mean really comfortable, there's no qualm, no hiccup. What that thing is all right, but you, if you're doing it and deliberately hiding a bad feeling you've got about, like for instance, I see people go to church in the day of the day, and I see they take a bottle of water, and even while the preacher is in the pulpit, they may open it and take a sip. No, that would not have happened before, but. It can be looked upon because people may be thirsty. Play. We live in a tropical country. You're, you're thirsty. You perspire. You look. You become dehydrated, and you take a sip. But could you imagine somebody handing around a flask, bottle of rum in church? They know that. They know that they shouldn't yeah. do it. So they would not want to do that with somebody be on the church premises or even in the church and light a cigarette mm -hmm. you know you shouldn't do that and you'd feel uncomfortable doing it because it is an unusual thing to do other people would look wrong at you you'd be a sore thumb the mere fact mm -hmm. that you get that feeling of distance that something is wrong then you know you shouldn't do it 
<laughs> now, I want to throw a question out. Now, we need to go for a break now. We're getting the signal to go for a break. Now, I want to throw a question out to you, and we're going to take it up after, the, after we turn on the, for the break. Now, okay. you, you will not, you said before, you will not allow them to go into the bedroom, I said. You, will, you allow them to go out by the, when they are alone by themselves, right? Yeah. Isn't isn't it this, isn't it almost like a double standard that because they can do whatever they want when you or nobody not are wrong, right? So what is it different that it what is so different that they come home and do or what or whatever you think they might do or perceive or perception that they might do that they do at home in the house? What I mean, what is I mean because what is the percept? I mean, what is so different because they out there. You know, they will um, take all the chances that they could take. When they're home, they probably will not go the distance that you think mm-hmm. they will mm-hmm. go at the outside. What well, is so different? Now, we want to take up that when we return uh, for the break. We're gonna, we have to go for a break now, and um, okay. we're going to take up that when we return, when we come back from the break. Okay. Tell it as it is with your hosts. Leon George and Leary McRae. Real talk, real, talk, real issues. issues. Right, we're discussing teenage dating. When, if, when do you think it's, it's the right time for your teenage son or daughter to start dating? Now, just before we go to the break, I throw out a question to John and Larry, really. Larry said earlier on that he would not allow his son or daughter to go into the bedroom and and close the door if he or she bring home a boyfriend or girlfriend that they did in. But at the same time, you would allow them to go out unsupervised. They can go to the movies, they can go to the park, they can go hiking, they can go by the beach and many things. And you are not there to supervise them. So therefore, the boundaries and restrictions that might be in your home, it will be no longer there. Isn't by doing this, you defeating the purpose of pra- even practicing double standards by doing this? Now, before you take the question, I want to also tell our listeners that they can reach us at CCV Radio on Facebook, and you can uh, send your emails at CCB Radio at ccbradio.com. You can also reach us at on Skype, and our Skype is CCV Radio. Uh, so you can add us to your Skype contacts and Skype contact and call us. And you can well, we get the phone numbers earlier that you could for you to call if you want to get into the program. So yes, um, John, you want to take the question that we were asking before we go for the break John are you there? hello Ye- yes hello yes are you yeah, hearing before, me? yes I'm hearing you okay. yeah, before I go for the break before we go for the break we were saying that you, you said earlier on there was no way you were going to allow your teenage son or daughter to go into the uh, bedroom and the door close, have the, the he or she will have the boyfriend or girlfriend. But at the same breath, you will allow them to go to the movies, unsupervised, to the beach or out in, a park or just to have an ice cream. They, on, on other circumstances, no one will be around to supervise them. The boundaries are, are that you set in your home and the restrictions that you set in your home. They, they will be no longer um, be implied when they when they out on their own. But isn't it a double standard, or isn't or, or would you be defeating the same purpose that you try to avoid if you allow them to go out on their own? No, I don't think so. And the reason is this: I would want my child. As a matter of fact, remember, I am not talking about children who pop up and whatever happen happens. These are children that I would have nurtured and they mm-hmm. understand family life and between, because we would have regular discussions. So I know what my children should know. And they would be seeing that I have trusted them 
mm-hmm. to go out there. They know that I know they could have sex in the back seat of the car if they wanted to. But I would be hoping that the rapport between us, how we talk to each other and, and, the, and, and the, the, the sort of dialogue we would have, the mom and I, I think, as a family, not me, the, the, the lawgiver, but parents, the mom and I, we would have these discussions. And they know that I am trusting them when they go out there. But if they came home now and wanted to do the same thing, I would see it that, that they, they, they really haven't got any respect for the honor which they owe me and mom, their parents. Because if you could come and take your boyfriend in there, and I am left there and thrown to the wolves to hear the oohs and ahs in your moments of ecstasy, that is disrespect. And I don't think I would have children who would do that to me. Mm-hmm. I... That's, I know, I, I, I have a different view, I, I really have a different view on that, because I, they're not, they first they're going, they're, going, they're going into the room, you, you, one time you want to assume that something wrong could happen in there, if they so happen to take off the clothes in there, and get into any sexual activity, the fact that they close the door, means that they have respect for you. They are not doing it with the open that you can come and see them. Right. Yeah. George, George the, it means then that if I need to go in there, I have to knock. In other words, what they are saying is, you are not permitted in here. How dare you? Mm-hmm. Well, listen, I agree John, with you. What, I, what I'm saying to you, if my 40 year old son or daughter is not allowed to date, they are not allowed to date, period. You can't tell me you, you are allowed to go out, be on sat on supervised. Is that okay when you go out? But when you come home by me, you, you have to be supervised. Well, what is that? Isn't that a double standard? What, what is that? Because it, I think it I, is not, I Either you are allowed to date, either you are allowed to date or not. Period. You're 14 years old and you're not allowed to date. Once you give them the permission to date and tell them that they can date, they can go out, spend time away from home. I, I, they're home, they're home now, which is the best place to be. All kinds of things happening out there. They can get in trouble out there. You don't want to put restrictions on them home. And you can't put, you do, you, 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 then you are not putting the same restrictions on them when they go on. So in that way, I don't think you should allow them to date. 